Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second and final round of the presidential debate 2013. And now, we welcome our moderators, Udwak Amimo and Joe Ageo. Good evening and welcome to the final presidential debate of 2013, organized by the Kenyan media. I'm Udwak Amimo. And I'm Joe Ageo. It is exactly one week to the general election on March 4th. And tonight we'll be hearing again from the eight presidential candidates on the issues that matter to you, the Kenyan voter, the economy. The live audience here at Brookhouse International School has agreed to remain silent. No jeering and no cheering during the debate. The only exception will be now as we welcome the candidates to the podium. So we're dealing with the economy and the first uh, question centers on the minimum wage. Um, I'll start with you, Professor Kiapi, in the order of entry. Um, what do you think the minimum wage in Kenya should be? <coughs> um, minimum wage is, of course, a factor of the economic conditions of the country. It is a factor of the labor itself. And, that, and it's also a function of the employers and the, the, the negotiation between the government and the trade unions. And, and therefore, when you are saying or setting a minimum wage, you must bring all these factors into consideration. So it is not a matter about saying this is the level exactly this. It is a matter about structuring labor in the country. Because in Kenya today, you have every now and then uh, one sector of the economy demanding a wage and another sector of the economy demanding an increase. And that is pointing to a much more serious problem. And the more serious problem is that the labor is not commensurate. There are disparities. And therefore, what I would like to do when I'm president is to engage as government and employers and the trade unions to really look at a sustainable uh, manner in which we can appropriate labor in the country. So how much we will use and how much we shall set must depend on the economy at that time, the, the prevailing conditions, and it must be negotiated so that you also must ensure there is stability. Because uh, labor and rest from time to time can also be not useful and not good for economic growth. So I, I think what has been missing is a structured engagement that brings all the stakeholders together. And this is my commitment to the Kenyan people and especially the employers that our biggest capital, our, our, our number one resource is the human capital or, or the labor. But we need to make sure that that labor is properly structured and managed in order to arrive at levels Thank that you. are Your sustainable. Time is up. Your time is up. Ms. Karu, I'll come to you because Professor Kiapi touched on labor and rest. And so Kenya um, currently ranks as one of the countries that uh, has the unfortunate dis distinction of being one of the most unequal. So we have a minimum wage at about 8,000 shillings, and for some people it's 500 shillings a day. What do you think the minimum wage should be? This yes. I, we, all over the world, the talk now is not about minimum wage. It's about livable wage. And that is what the ILO standards demand. Therefore, it is a question of having strong labor movement, creating an enabling environment for labor movement to thrive so that they can have um, the strength to negotiate with the industry and seeing the labor movement as a partner. My government will have a partnership with the labor movement, will encourage in the industry to partner with labor. When you have livable wages for workers. Industry also benefits. Healthy workers are able to be more productive. So it's for the benefit of the country, the benefit of the economy, and wages also depend on how much the government is putting in, in terms of uh, other public services. My government will give universal health care, what we are calling cradle to grave, uh, free education from nursery, primary to secondary, this again takes away the burden of uh, the cost, some of the cost of living away from the worker. So a combined effort by 
government, how we spend our tax money, and industry also investing a little bit more in the workers. The industry makes profit, the workers are happy and are able to produce more. That's what I would do. Okay, thank you yeah. very much. Mr. Odinga, um, we've heard uh, um, two candidates now talk about uh, engaging with labor. Um, we've heard uh, a livable wage um, uh, brought into the discussion. Uh, what do you think the lowest, the least, uh, uh, what is the least wage a, a Kenyan should earn? Um, given that um, uh, people in your class of leaders earn more than $10,000 a month. Well, uh, we talk of uh, the living wage. That is a, a wage that will enable somebody to li live a, a decent life. And you look at the shopping basket, the cost of, of living in the country, the cost of transport, the cost of, uh, of uh, uh, the rent, uh, the, the cost of uh, things like the food and so on. So that is what it should be. Now, we, we need to have a, a, a dialogue, a tripartite uh, uh, arrangement where you have got the unions, the employer, and the government talking about this so that we really know what is the cost of living in the country today and what should it be. And uh, that, that is what should determine what should be the living wage, a minimum wage in the country so that there's harmony. Because you must know that for us to be able to grow, we must be competitive in the international labor market. If, for example, the, the wages are too high in our economy, of course we price ourselves out of that market. So we must look at the causative factors. What is it that makes the unions demand 300% pay, pay rise? The teachers, the nurses, the doctors, the lecturers, and so on. So we need to have a dialogue to be able to determine that. I'll just uh, interrupt you there to ask you, do you not know what the cost of living is in Kenya at the moment? No, we know what it is, but it is not static. The cost of living keeps on changing. Like, for example, if the price of oil goes up, uh, it will go, go up tomorrow. The cost of transport will go up. Matatu used to cost uh, 30 shillings from Dandora into town. Today it is 50 shillings. Uh, a, 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 a packet of milk was 25 shillings, now it is 45. Uh, 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 Unga was, for example, 70, it is now 120. So we will want to we'll need dialogue so that we can agree on what really is a living wage for the worker in the country. Mr. Dida, do you have any thoughts on the minimum wage? What do you think it should be? Minimum or living wage, if you will. Well, uh, Due to economic inequality, is why 90% of Kenyans are marginalized economically. And uh, I'm hearing a dialogue, and the nurses are still on the road. What they need is always on posters in the road. This is my house rent, this is this, this is this. They sing this, and it had happened. Uh, what we need is to clearly explain to everybody that nobody is super Kenyan, nobody is super, whether the president or the security. It is unfair for a Kenyan to earn a gross salary, gross of 8,000, while a leader is earning, leave the salary and entertainment allowance of five, half a million. It is unfair. And it is shocking because the commission that was appointed to look into this is also maybe circumference and nearness to the palace is one thing that is affecting most of us. Uh, my government will not accept the figures that were given and what, what I propose is a formula. Which formula do we use as Kenyans to pay these wages? It is the formula that matters. If we will base ourselves on payment following education, is a formula, and everybody is contented. But we don't understand, I don't understand, and any, any human being does not understand why somebody should be paid two million and another one five, 5,000. So what, 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 what I will encourage and what my government will advocate is equity for everybody. Nobody is super and nobody is a nugu. We are all the same. We have the same stomach, we have the same children, and everything the, the, the leaders need is what the citizens need.
Thank you very much, Mr. Dida. Mr. Kenyatta, you've been the Minister of Finance, and uh, Mr. Dida was talking about the inequalities in Kenya, uh, the salary the, uh, disparities. Um, and I'll take you back to 1972, when the International Labour Organization recommended uh, a salary freeze for Kenya's top uh, income earners. Um, what do you think um, is a livable wage for Kenyans, and would your government um, freeze the, the salaries of its uh, top uh, income earners? I think the most important thing to recognize is that uh, the cost of, of, of um, or the minimum wage, the living cost, is not something that you can say is a fixed cost, because it depends on overall the cost of living. What we need to ensure is that we have a wage that ensures that people have a decent living, but at the same time, a minimum wage that ensures that also as a nation, we remain competitive. And that is why we, in the Jubilee Coalition, are actually focusing not just on the, on the wage bill itself, but to actually just say that we need to really focus ourselves, especially when it comes to agriculture, reducing the cost of agriculture, making food much more affordable, looking at housing, how can we make the cost of building our houses that much cheaper so that the rents can come down. Because at the end of the day, that wage is supposed to ensure that every individual in Kenya who is employed has a decent life. That can only come once we ensure that we also are maintaining the prices of our foodstuffs, telecommunications, and so on and so forth, at a level where we don't have to consistently push the wage bill up in order to allow people to survive. That said and done, we must also recognize that as politicians and as leaders, we do have a moral responsibility as well to ensure that these kind of heavy salary increases that we consistently give ourselves as politicians don't actually happen. I want to remind Kenyans that uh, when I was, during my tenure as uh, the Minister of Finance, I was under intense pressure from um, members of parliament on this issue of increasing salaries. And in fact, our finance bill was very late because I actually rejected that. And I told them that it's actually not possible for us to be able to award ourselves these huge increases while at the same time expecting the average Kenyan to live on the kind of salary Your time wage is up. he has. Um, uh, Mr. Kenneth, we've heard about uh, uh, the huge wage bill um, in uh, Kenya at the moment, which I believe uh, in, for, for the uh, um, leadership, the government wage bill is 8% of our GDP. Um, uh, our leadership size is also comparable to uh, the U.S., although their population is 10 times more than ours. So how would you address this income disparity uh, in Kenya? I think, first of all, with the Constitution, we need to implement the issues to do with salaries and remuneration commission so that we can have basic standards within government officers, and this would be across the board. I am happy that they have seen it twice to reduce and they should be encouraged to reduce further so that we can save uh, the government from such a huge wage bill that needs to go to basic services. When we talk about cost of living, cost of living is one up because basic services are not there. So if you get your 8,000 shillings, you still have to cater for yourself from a medical point. The transport system is not there. You have to secure yourself. And sometimes then you find that you have been left with nothing to take home. Now, in assessing what the minimum wage bill should be, it is important to review what the rate of inflation is. It is also important to cushion Kenyans against factors that are external. We need to think of how we can cushion Kenyans against, for example, when oil goes up, our food prices go up. We need to cushion Kenyans when the dollar goes up, appreciates against the shilling, then because we are net importer, we are left with no choice but to increase. And I sympathize with the ordinary worker because they are really suffering. But we also need to expand our economy to create opportunities because at the moment also, our workers have been reduced to compete for fewer opportunities in the market. And therefore, the issue of the minimum wage bill becomes more or less compulsory, but if they had opportunities, they would be in a position to venture into other areas of employment within opportunities that have been created within the labor market. Thank you, Mr. Kenneth. Mr.